Okay, so it's James Talks About Systems Architecture Week, sponsored by Pure Systems. Here I am again. Um, I've got some stuff to talk about. And I think it's going to be big data. I'm sure you've heard this expression, big data. Um, no one's really clear what it means. I think pretty obviously one of the things that happens is small da data very quickly becomes big data. Um, it's not so long ago that a 50 megabyte um, uh, file was a big file. Uh, these days it's really tiny. Um, if you look at the kind of storage requirements that my son has, it's unbelievable. I mean, he could fill up that iPad in next to no time. And what do we do with all this data? Um, and what do we actually mean by big data? I'm not going to try and define it um, because I think we're onto a hiding to nothing, but I think one of the key ways to look at it is here is cool technology that was built on the web in order to analyze large data sets, and now it's going to be consumed by the enterprise. So it's not that the enterprise didn't do this stuff before. Um, you know, very clearly, if you look at Teradata, that was big data you know, 20, 30 years ago. This is nothing new in some sense. It was just to a smaller set of constituencies. Um, it was only pharma, or it was only retail. The simple fact is, is huge scale processing is now available to us all. One super important context, I mentioned the web, is this thing called Hadoop. Um, so basically, Hadoop is an open source engine for data analysis, um, batch jobs, great at counting, great at sorting, um, and really, really useful for um, data analysis. Uh, was invented at Yahoo uh, and uh, open sourced. We've all taken advantage of it. Now, I don't think I've seen a technology um, that has become kind of enterprise ready as quickly as this almost ever. So what was, oh, it was just a few companies, including Yahoo, was using it. Now it's absolutely everyone. There is not a software company involved in analytics, data warehousing, or any of these spaces that doesn't need to integrate Hadoop. Um, Hadoop is increasingly the context um, in which uh, data analysis is going to be done. Um, we've kind of moved out of some of the traditional world of BI and analytics, but that stuff is still relevant. So we're kind of seeing new stacks emerge, and people asking themselves questions like, well, so well, how do we clean this data? How long do we keep it for? Um, so this Hadoop thing, if it's going to get better and better every server I roll out, is that just a scale out question? And then someone else will say, oh no, you need this to be available all the time. So you've got a question of, well, OK, if it's a real-time infrastructure, what will that look like? So there's an awful lot of systems engineering needs to happen um, to, to, to make Hadoop suitable for a range of use cases, and that's kind of what's happening now. So if you look at all the big vendors, whether it be IBM, Cisco, HP, uh, Essential, Informatic, all that sort of thing, it's all about how do we integrate and, and do stuff with Hadoop. So if you're SAP, yeah, sure. Um, you've said to yourself, OK, we've got this uh, data engine we're building called HANA, but we're going to have to deal with Hadoop as well. And Hadoop is from, fundamentally from a scale-out world. Traditional enterprise architecture, as we all know, is scale-up, large-scale systems. And I think it's where these two come together. So we've got the world of scale-up and scale-out. That's the bottom line. What are the systems that are going to be best deliver that? And I think that's what we're beginning to see um, people working on now. Um, so yeah, what I'm saying is it's, it's the, the tools we've taken from the web. Um, we're going to bring in and integrate them with the enterprise and start being able to do things that we just weren't able to do before. Um, what do we need big data for? Well, pretty simply, um, look, everything is a sensor, right? There's an internet of things. It doesn't matter whether it's healthcare um, uh, devices or manufacturing devices or the stuff that runs the city. Um, it, you know, whether it's the, 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 the sewage or the plumbing or any other stuff, it's creating data. In the past, we weren't really sure what to do with it. Well, increasingly, we're in a position where we can use that data. Great example, London Underground. Every journey taken here goes into one database if you're using the Oyster card. Um, and for years and years and years, they had the data, but they couldn't analyze it because it just you couldn't get a cost uh, structure that worked just by throwing it in an Oracle database. That again and again and again, someone would say, yeah, we could do this for you, and they never could. They're beginning to do it now because of these capabilities we've got. We've got um, low-cost um, uh, hardware and storage um, in a way that we didn't before. The cost of memory has absolutely cratered in memory is going to be a big part of this. So, you know, we don't have to analyze it uh, in the database or on the disk. We can actually analyze it in memory. And I think that's one of the big things. We've got in memory has come in um, from a server perspective. So thank you, Intel, and so on. Um, we've got these new cool open source software components that are going to be very, very applicable. Um, we've got, uh, you know, suppose we can only buy a couple of servers. Well, you can buy hundreds or even thousands from an Amazon if we wanted to burst that way. But the bottom line is we've got cool software, cool new hardware. Uh, it turns out, obviously, doing stuff in memory gives you much, much faster transaction times. So I talked about Hadoop and the batch. You know, we had Visa had a process that took three days. It's now down to, I think, uh, a matter of a few minutes. Um, in memory, we're seeing the same sorts of thing, two, three, four, maybe five orders of magnitude better in terms of the response to a query. 
Um, and finally, this thing is more data is available. So um, rather than in the past where everybody kept their data close to their chest, and businesses are still continuing to do that, there are more and more data sets available. We can get great results by pulling them all um, in for analysis. More data sets means more likely you're gonna get the right answers. Pull all that together. Did I say I wasn't gonna define big data? I think I just defined big data. We're gonna need servers to run this stuff. Whoever packages all this stuff up best is gonna win and they're gonna win big. Um, so there are various vendors out there um, you don't want to pull it all together yourself from an open source perspective unless you're a Yahoo or a Google. So how can we do the things they do but do them from an enterprise perspective? That's what I'm talking about. So we're going to be talking more about these issues on a Google Hangout on Friday. It's going to be live but also taped. Um, but there'll be a range of subject matter experts and hopefully a pretty good conversation. I'm chairing that. That's what's coming at the end of the week. Um, so yeah, get involved in the series. Um, you know, put some comments on this video. Uh, comment on my blog and ideally we'll see you on the hang Hangout too. Uh, and uh, that's about it for now.